What's up, everybody? On today's episode, we continue on with the zombie verter, the, the inverter, and we add a battery. But before we get started, a word from our sponsor, <clears throat> PB Blaster, because America. So, I want to start off by building on what we've done in the prior episodes. And we now have the inverter connected with the sync serial. We are not going to have a throttle on here. We know how to do that. We're not going to have the forward and reverse switch on here. Just don't want to clutter this any more than what it already is. In the last video, we added a relay so that we have the zombie control the power to the inverter via a relay and today we continue on and we're going to add a battery maybe if we have time we're going to add a couple modules so i want to start off by talking about the high voltage so we're kind of going to do the high voltage wiring first and then move on to the low voltage there's going to be some similarities despite of the brand of batteries you buy and the brand of you know inverter you have what have you but there are going to be also some similarities we're using a bmw battery module and if you remember when it comes to ev batteries the biggest size is a battery pack that's something that most likely we can't lift ourselves is the size of this table Then inside of the battery pack, we have battery modules. Battery modules are about the size of regular car batteries. And inside the battery module, we have battery cells. Yeah, I figure it's uh, important to get our naming conventions correctly. So let's get started by going over the high voltage connection to the inverter. <laughs> So high voltage is connected with orange cables, orange wires, call them what you will. This is a BMW module, so it uses these proprietary connectors. They're a pain in the butt, but they're fairly safe, okay? Your pack, if you're using a Tesla, will be different. Obviously, Nissan Leaf will be different. But let's go over connecting this. So the battery here has a positive and a negative, and then it will connect to our inverter to the positive and negative. At this point, it's worth repeating that we do not connect on our EV conversions to the OEM 
port, if you will, battery port. This is where the OEM Toyota Prius battery pack would connect to. It was only running on 200 volts or approximately that. I'm hoping to run my system on 300 volts, 350, maybe 400. So we bypass this connector and we tap into what is called the high voltage bus, the main bus down here. And so that's where we will connect. But if we just connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive directly, you know, from the from the battery pack pack or the battery module, even though this is just one module out of five or out of six, it will blow up the capacitor because although this module is only 60 volts, it has quite a bit of amps. No one really knows how many amps this thing has. Anyway, when connecting this battery to the inverter, we can't just connect it directly. Hence, this thing right here, this black box. This is a BMW safety box. That's their name brand, or it's what they're calling a contactor box. So we have to go through this intermediary to connect to the inverter. This box contains two contactors in it, one for the positive cable, and another one for the negative cable. And it has a third contact or a small one, which we refer to as a relay. And that one acts as a pre-charge circuit, runs through a resistor, and it trickles in some power into the inverter to sort of warm it up. And then once a pre-charge to a certain voltage, then we open up, or I should open up the path, but really close the connectors to allow the current in. So we're gonna start off by connecting this module to the contactor box. And on these systems, you have to be really careful. They are labeled, but you still have to be careful. And I, what I noticed on these packs, the BMW packs, you can get these packs out of about four different vehicles as far as I know. You can get them out of the 330E, the 530E, 740E, and the X5. Now, forgive me, I don't know the series of BMWs, so I'm calling them just by the 330, 530, whatever. Usually what I've observed is module one has a negative lead that goes to the contactor box, negative input, obviously. The inside stuff here is the input to the black box. The out, out ones are the output, if we think of it that way. So I'm going to take you through this carefully from how the power will flow into the inverter. Normally, what you would do is you would connect the battery pack last, okay? This is only 60 volts, but I'm still being careful, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and this is an actual lead from a 530E. It's a very long lead, and it's labeled on here for S minus, which is, or S negative, which is safety box negative, and then the one minus, which is the battery negative. So I'm going to connect the negative here to the uh, battery pack for the, for the input to it. And then I'm going to connect the other end to the battery module, module here. Okay, and then we have the positive side. So what I've noticed on these modules is the last highest number module. So if you have a 330E, it will be module number five. And if you have a 530E or 740E or the X5, it will be module number six. The difference between those cars is the 330E has one less module. So they have the exact same modules except one less. So there's five of those. And then in the uh, bigger cars, it's six modules. So here, I'm kind of pretending that this is out of the 330E and this module number one negative runs to the negative, but if we pretend that this is module five, then it's positive will run to the safety box positive. Okay, 
and then that will connect to the positive when, when we're ready to make the last last connection if you will okay so now we need to run the safety box to the inverter to these um, extended uh, bus bars if you will and what we notice with this safety box is that there is yet another intermediary there is yet another middleman if you will so the black box the safety box goes inside the battery box the battery pack if you will and then this is the connector on the outside so first we need to connect this to this connector and just so you know I am a little bit bent well, a lot brand specific here, just because this is what I have. So, but I want to point out that I'm using all OEM cables so far. And earlier in the video, I asked about color coding. And you have to be really careful because actually the white one here is the negative and what I would call the black plug, which I was kind of assuming this is the negative, but it's not. This is the positive one. So what we're going to do here is connect now the output here which is the positive here and this is again stock and these are keyed so you cannot you cannot plug them into the wrong place thank goodness okay so that just clicks in there and then obviously this one And it clicks in there, like so. Trying to, trying to do this sort of so that we can see what we're doing. Maybe keep it semi-logical here. But it's tough because these are so short. Okay, so power from the module to the safety box. Right now, there is no energy coming out of these right here. If I was to put a multimeter on here, we'd get nothing. That's the purpose of this safety box. Okay, then from here, we continue on. So, you know me, I'm a junkie for OEM cables. So I went out and I purchased the actual OEM BMW battery pack cable here, okay? Both of these ends are identical. And I was planning on using this on my truck, so I cut it, okay? I cut off the end, but this thing is, I don't know, I'm six feet tall, so this thing is slightly taller than me, maybe six, six, seven feet max. Okay, so I cut off about 18 inches of it. This, is, was, this was long enough for what I needed in the truck and then I changed my mind. But these ends here, I crimped on ring terminals so we can screw them on there, okay? But again, this part, this part here is OEM. And I am showing you this because I will use the OEM battery pack in my Rabbit. If you take the modules out, which you are welcome to do, and build your own battery box, then you could maybe bypass this connector. Uh, I've seen guys who will just put ring terminals on the two leads coming out of the safety box and just connect them directly to the inverter. I think that's really smart and clever, but I'm just kind of, I don't want to cut those other leads and I needed something longer, so I'm just showing you how this whole jazz goes. Uh, OEM style. How do you click close? Ah. I don't know if you pull it or push it. Okay, whatevs. Okay. And then now we need to make these connections. Notice my battery is still disconnected. That's okay. It's what we want.
I'm trying to see if there's any logical way to do this. And look like I've worked on the car before. Positive, negative, Okay, those are close, but they are not going to touch. I made sure of that. So that is our high voltage connection. And then now we need to make the final connection here, right there. So, you know, the rule is just use one hand, have a plastic screwdriver because this thing is freaking sliding. There it is. Okay, so. I walk you through it, you'll figure it out on your own. It always turns into uh, orange spaghetti. Apologies for that. The point is that we're seeing that the battery goes to the safety box and the safety box then talks to the inverter or sends the power to the inverter. And that's it for the high voltage, okay? Um, we are now going to turn to the low voltage part.